and she's a very talented person too. And you sound lovely and look lovely. I like the way you have you left. You look good. Okay. You look good. beautiful. Thank you. All right. For 91. For 91. Mm -hmm. This is just for camera purposes. Tell me about who you are and your history in Macon, Georgia. Oh, now how long do you want me to talk? A couple of minutes on that? I mean, really. Just, just a, a minute about your family about oh. around Macon. You know, where you were born in Macon. And I was born in Macon. And, and, and you were raised in Macon, Georgia. I was. I went to Miller High School and graduated from there before I went to college. Wow. Right. Okay, so. And, and then moving on through high school, we got this iconic landmark sitting in Macon, Georgia called the Pig and Whistle. Tell me about your your memories of the Pig All right, are you, are you uh, taping now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Everything oh, I did not know that. Everything's edited. Oh, okay. All right, well, I was, you want, just want me to tell you that I was born in Macon, Georgia. And I uh, went to Whittle School. Uh, I was an only child. My mother was a homemaker. And my daddy was a newspaper pressman at the Macon Telegraph and at the Macon News. And before his death, he became foreman. He worked his almost his entire life there. Uh, after I graduated from A.L. Miller High School, I had a very good education there. I went to, uh, finished at Bernal College. It was a wonderful school. I majored in history in those days, and I graduated in 1947. A girl graduated from college. You either got married, I had no prospect, and or you um, became a nurse. That would have been an impossible career for me. Or you became a school teacher. I had majored in history. I loved it. So I thought, well, I'll teach school in Macon. So I came here to Macon, and Daddy was still working, and Mama was the homemaker. And it was interesting because I was job hunting before going to get ready to teach school when uh, my father, being a president, saw Peyton Anderson, who was a slave of the same age. And Peyton Anderson says, what is Dolores, which was my name, Dolores, not Dell, doing? He said, well, she's looking for a job. Peyton Anderson said to my daddy, tell her that I just bought some uh, interest in WNEX radio. Tell her to go talk to Al Lowe. He was the manager. I did, and that started my long career. It's been wonderful. I worked in oh, Chicago, St. Louis, New York. Came home, got married. My husband's Henry Napier, make an attorney. And I started at WMAZ. So I've had a wonderful career. <laughs> I've probably told you more than you wanted to know. But a wonderful career, too. Cause yes, thank you. And at WMAZ. And still at this age, I am working and uh, doing a personal profile for Channel 13 and for uh, the, the Fox radio station, a monthly to do about what is you should do in Macon. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about this iconic landmark that people have been talking about today that they remember when they were younger called the Pig and Whistle. Oh, the in place. Oh, definitely. Before they even knew what in places were. <laughs> Pig and Whistle was a part of every teenager's life, and I'm talking about the early times. You, you were open in the 30s and then during the war, and it was at that time that I really knew a lot about it because high school, you know, after school, and when you had dates, you'd go to the Pig and Whistle to enjoy not only the good food, but the good company if you had a date. And sometimes you wouldn't stop to eat, I'll tell you. you would ride around and see who all was there, look in the car, see if, you know, who he had a date with, or was you dating the fellow that I hoped would ask me. <laughs> so that was just part of the situation. But not only that, I personally uh, went a few times with one of the teachers from the high school because they asked me to sell ads for the newspaper uh, at Miller High School. I wanted to, you know, write, but they said, oh, no, you go sell ads, so I did. And the teacher that was in charge of me uh, would take me to the various places to go in and ask them, would they like to buy an ad in the A.L. Miller High School paper? <laughs> Some did. So every now and then she'd say to me, let's go to the pig. That was after we'd done our work. And so we'd go to the pig, and 
It was just really a fun place. But teenagers really were the ones, and later college too, not just teenagers college. I remember hearing music, car radios, not like today, not like today, not black, because you'd hear Sentimental Journey, or you'd hear Kiss Me Once, Kiss Me Twice, it's been a long, long time, you know, <laughs> from people maybe coming back from the war. You know? it, it was just the in place. Atlanta had their in place for this age group and the interest group. Macon was the pig, no doubt about it. Is it favorite menu item that, that, that just sticks out in your mind that you wish you could have again? I don't know. I would just have to tell you, honestly, I loved barbecue, and that's really what I remember about barbecue. Getting the barbecue, eating the barbecue, and looking and seeing who all was there. And watching and seeing who was cruising through. Who, the who all was there and who all wasn't there, too. See, sometimes I know that some of the kids who didn't have cars uh, would hitch a ride to go to. Uh, the pig, because they knew some of the boys in the, from the near high school who were there. Do you think that over the years people have really paid attention to all of the notable personalities that have worked at the Pig and Whistle? That I do not know for sure. I do know that that uh, Tennessee Williams, they say, was there, and he had written, you know, one or maybe two plays at that time. Um, I, as far as Little Richard is concerned, see, when I was at WNEX, Little Richard was working sometimes at the bus station and sometimes at uh, oh, the, the place he was, I don't know, he was working somewhere on Broadway, Martin Luther King Boulevard, Broadway in those days. And the TikTok, he was working there. And he would come sometimes come up to the a radio station, and I would see him, so I knew who he was. Boy, later when I saw that Olympics, then I did I ever know who he was? But I knew he was a recording artist too, because I played records, a lot of records over my day. See, uh, Tennessee Williams, Little Richard, Otis Redding worked at the Oh, Avenue, sure. Georgia Avenue. You had Blind Willie McTell that worked at. He's a famous blues singer that worked at the one in Atlanta. But then the people that have been through that parking lot that they have fed over the years, from, from Jerry Reed to Cher to Elvis on two occasions, oh, the yeah. list just goes on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It my is. dad took note that there was a famous movie actress that when he was there as a kid, she came through with a, her mom on the way to Florida, and he just really paid attention to her, which made me pay attention to her years later. Now I'm friends with her family. And it was actress Ella Raines that they had, oh, they had yes. stopped in one time, and he said, they stepped out of these cars and these beautiful women. He just knew they wasn't from Georgia. But I said, yeah, they could have been. He, they just wasn't dressed like they did down here. Uh -huh. They were overdressed. But it's, uh, so many people uh, have been through Macon and stopped off. Oh, it, it, was a, it was a destination, no doubt about it. Because you hear from other people that that had been there and, and knew the kind of place it was. It was uh, fun and active, and when you left, you knew you'd be back many times. Yeah, the, the, the famous car hops, that was the other one we heard this morning. All the singing car hops, the people that would sing the menu to you, to, you'd have your favorite car hop with a nickname, whether it was Stallion or Leroy or Bear or some of these. And they, and, and they all knew you. You know, they knew you, you knew them. And uh, it was just a part of, the, of life, of that era. I hope it happens again. How do you think the Pig and Whistle would do today in Macon? I don't know. I'm, I'm not that familiar with the business mm -hmm. end of it. Uh, I, and I don't know about the... I, I just simply can't, couldn't answer that question. I would sure hope so. I would sure hope so because I think there's a great need for it. Uh, just uh, the, the kind of place that, you know, how people say, oh, you know how things used to be, that's the way they should be again. Well, let's give it a try and see. Yeah, and maybe it could does. be again. So, yes, I hope it happens. Well, you know, if we ever get around to the chance of rebuilding and making, we have to have uh, uh, a keynote speaker to come out. You know, I told uh, the 
the mayor, I said, you know, we'll consider him, but I have to get permission from you first. See? <laughs> oh, what you, a you, remark. You'll be the first choice. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. <laughs> Should that ever be, could I uh, probably say uh, Trody Tro? Uh, why not? Uh, I'm for that. I'm for that, and I'm for that, and maybe in the back of a 57 convertible, you know, get that squared through the parking oh, lot. You know, as a matter of fact, I used to have one. Really? <laughs> My husband, yes, yes, I used to have a yellow convertible. I think it was a 57, it might not, but it might have been 62 or something, I don't know. But I mean, it was really pretty. Well, we saw when, you know, when it was a very active place, you saw all kind of cars, right. you know. Not many trucks, so to speak, because trucks weren't as in then as they are now. But we would see any kind of car those teenagers could get. <laughs> a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, wild things, crazy things happened there over the years, too, that people talk about. They all talk about, you know, crews in the parking lot, and they talk about, you know, ROTC had a habit in the 50s of burning their uniforms at the end of the of the year in the parking lot and uh, people come up to us still come up to me to this day and say I met my significant other in the, at the pig yes a lot of people did and then there was two confirmed weddings at the pigs over the years too that I did not know they got married in the parking lot after they met there oh my golly look out Las Vegas yeah, <laughs> married the places. Places. <laughs> why not why not yeah. It could happen. It might be a good thing to think about. Think I don't know. About. Well, in, in closing, I want to yes. thank you for coming. Oh, uh, well, to, listen, down memory lane, you know, I can think about it being in the cars and hearing songs that I mentioned, String of Pearls, and oh, my, my. Well, see, I've enjoyed every moment of it. <laughs> and that's, people look at me sometimes and think that I'm odd because that's the music that my grandmother raised me on was the big band era. You know, oh, the Shaw, best. Artie Shaw, the best. Down to Fletcher Henderson. I know I've got them all. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. I can envision uh, the pig and whistle uh, force feeding that to someone uh -huh. so they could respect it because that was beautiful music. Well, fortunately, when I went to Chicago and I worked in Chicago, I was the first all night girl disc jockey in the country. And when I was in Chicago, it was the it was the era of Rosemary Clooney and of Patty Page and yeah. you know all of those people. So I'm very nostalgic about music, and I prefer the music of bygone years. Yeah, and it's it's I think it's wonderful history too. In thinking about music, that uh, you know the pig and whistle has played a prominent part in that scene for a long time in the formation of rock and roll music, for sure. All preceded, everything was leading up to just exactly what, what you have said. You mentioned Otis Redding. Mm -hmm. If I may, I know we're closing, but I, and this is not has anything to do with the pig and whistle. But we, my husband and I, Henley Napier, we were going and did go down to the Bahamas on the summer vacation. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I am so glad to get away from Macon, you know, on a vacation. He said, yeah, it is good. And we were at Bluebeard's Castle, you know, it was there with, that's where we stayed, visited. And we were having supper, dinner, supper. And lo and behold, the music came on, the loudspeaker, you know. Otis Reddick singing, sitting on the dock of the bay. And I turned to my husband, I said, I miss Macon, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Thank I'm you for asking me. Certainly. My pleasure. I am glad. Let me get that microphone. Okay. I'm sorry it was trouble. You ain't no trouble for me. <laughs> Is your wife in the media business too? Yeah. My wife was a lawyer for 14 years in another country. And then now she's working over here. She works with